Back when I was a little kid, my biggest nemesis at craft time was cutting circles. I could not cut a nice circle to save my little life, and my sister always had to come to my rescue, probably begrudgingly, and cut out my circles for me. I don't know if that's the same reason why I've been avoiding doing a circle weaving, but today, we're going to do just that. We're gonna do this around weaving. Let's get started. If you need a tutorial for how to warp a hoop, here's the tutorial, full tutorial. Um, but before I actually start weaving, I need to pick out colors. Okay, this is a lot of supplies, which, why are we even surprised by that anymore? And yet here we are. Is this too many supplies? Probably, but I do kind of like the vibe of it, and so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna let myself go with it. Here's the thing, this is a very small hoop, so are we gonna fit all of these materials even on there? Probably not, but I figure if I have like a few options, a lot of options, um, may maybe that will help. Maybe it'll make it worse, I don't know. But I like all these colors and I think they go well together, so it's a good starting point. Now, I think in the very center of the loom, I'm gonna use some 8-8 cotton warp string to just start this off. Let's move some of these over so I can like see some of my table again. And try to group these in different color categories. So I'm grabbing just some 8-8 cotton warp string. This hoop was warped with 4-8 um, cotton, but what I wanna do is just weave in the very center of the loom to start with so that we kind of have the core, like the middle finished. Full disclosure, I have done one circle weaving before and I didn't even fully finish it. So <laughs> I'm not that experienced with this, which is why we haven't talked about it very much on this channel, but I'm determined to take those things that I feel like resistance on and be like, why do I feel that? Is it just because I haven't made one that I like? Like, what is it about this that I'm like avoiding? So maybe we'll find that out today. I really don't wanna make the warp super, super tight at this point. So I think I am gonna go over to under two with plain weave. Oh, that's really tightening my warp. So hopefully this doesn't become a complete nightmare to weave on. But you know what, here we are. I'm only gonna do like maybe a couple more rows. Cause I just, I don't wanna be trying to do chunky stuff out in the middle, but I think I'm, I've am i got an, almost enough here. I think that's enough of a center for me. Yeah, I'm gonna say that's enough. I'm just gonna cut off some of the excess. And I think what I'll do is just sort of tie these in a knot for now, and then we'll tuck them in later. All right, so where do I start? And how do I want to do this? Because like I said, I don't think I want to do spiral, at least not entirely spiral. Like maybe I want to try to do little sections that go kind of like this. So it's almost more like pie sections, but I don't really know. Like I said, like I've never, I've never actually completed a circle weaving before. And so I'm just like, I don't know where this is going. No idea. But apparently I'm starting with this green rope. We're gonna try to not <laughs> question things too much. I think I'm gonna do some knotting because I do love that texture. And we'll just kind of have that knot stick out like that. We'll see what we can create. But I'm just kind of like doing some plain weave and then throwing a knot in there and just kind of seeing what kind of texture I can create with this and sort of the shape as well, I guess, because I, if I don't want to do spiral, I'm going to have to do this in sort of different types of like more organic shapes. Okay, so I have something. <laughs> well, I think that's the thing about sort of like organic looking weavings is that like the, the process is so organic too. Like you just kind of have to start something and then be like, how do I feel about this? Do I like it? Do I want to take it out? You know, like where should I go next? So we've started. Okay, now I need to figure out like what color do I want to put next to it? What kind of stitch? Ooh, oh, I really like that together. This sort of like 
I'm gonna call it like an antique. This is our antique wool. And it's a little bit of a similar color, but because it's silk, we have this sheen to it. And I really like how it goes with this, this green. Maybe we can do like the loops situation. So I'm gonna tuck an end in the back and I'm gonna just, everywhere the silk is going over warp strings, I'm gonna just pull up little loops to create a better, well, not a better texture, just more texture. So I'm basically just doing over two, under two plain weave. And then if everywhere it's going over warp strings, I'm pulling up a little loop. And I like the texture that it's creating because I do think I want a lot of texture on this piece because when we have an affixed warp like this, you kind of want to take advantage because you don't have to worry about the structure of the piece because the essentially the loom is this rigid metal hoop and the piece is going to stay on the hoop even when it's done. And so I don't need to worry about the structure of the piece once the tension is gone because the tension is going to remain. I'm going to switch I think to doing over one under one because it does seem like these loops don't want to stay as well now because I think they're just a little bit too loose so I'm gonna just see if that helps if we can sort of lock in those loops so they don't pull out so I guess in some ways we do still have to think about structure in this regard I'm just I'm gonna be using this tighter plain weave to just hold everything where I want it to stay okay I kind of like I kind of like this this is definitely more successful than any other ones I've tried already so that's exciting. All right, so I have some cotton, I have some silk. Do I wanna sort of introduce another type of fiber? So I'm thinking either the dark, the blue, or the white. I think I'm gonna go with the blue. It's still wool, but it's got this really cool like boucle texture and this yarn is essentially like sewn together so that it's like all loopy like this. And I really like it. This yarn is so cool because it just, it creates the texture for us. We don't need to do a whole lot with it. I'm like nervous because it's going so well. <laughs> do you guys ever have that? Where you're just like, this is feeling a little bit too easy maybe, but it is entirely possible that I was massively overcomplicating it every time I've tried it before. So that's probably what was happening. So I think I'm gonna stop there with this and I'm gonna keep like all these strands, like I'm probably gonna wanna start repeating colors. So all these little strands are gonna come in handy later. So I'm not too worried about kind of using things a little bit randomly. Where do I wanna go next? Cause I could start bringing in like a little bit of off white. I think I'm gonna do it. I really am trying to get better at, you know, not spending too much time humming and hawing about what I'm doing and just like do something and see what happens. I do think I wanna bring in this dark color cause I just think it's gonna be really pretty. And at some point I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna decide to like sort of not bring in more new materials and just start kind of reintroducing each color in just to bring some like cohesion to it. So it's not like, you know, 5 million different textures and colors and you could totally do that. But I tend to like to like go a little bit more with the repeating colors because to me it just like feels better. So I'm gonna take a strand of this. Okay, where do I wanna start? I'm thinking I'm gonna start here and go over one, under one. So just regular old plain weave. And then I think I am gonna sort of just pull up little loopy guys. Oh my gosh, I love these colors so much. I feel shocked. I feel shocked that I'm like actually really enjoying this <laughs> because I never thought I would. And I also feel shocked that like how, uh, how much like this color palette is just, I am in, super in love with it. Super, super love. Okay, I'm gonna stop there with that. Okay, we're gonna try something. I've never done it before. I know that a lot of people do this with like a core spun yarn and I don't have a core spun, but I do have this like felted yarn. So it's basically like a roving yarn that they felt 
and it's like super, super strong. It would make, it'd be great for like some more organic looking macrame and stuff, I think. But I wanna create this texture I've seen before. Kind of like, the, it's the same knot we would use for a fringe. And basically what I want is for the, these little yarns to be sticking straight up. And then I think you could go back and cut them and, and then it gives you like this whole neat little texture. So I just need to figure out like what a good length is. I could use a Giord's knot. Um, how do I do that again? We do have a Giord's, am I saying that right? Giord's knot tutorial. And I'll put a link for that in the description as well. And basically what it allows you to do is create a Raya knot right off the ball of yarn so that you're not cutting a ton of different little pieces. I'm feeling like I need more of like the pinks in here now because we've got a lot of sort of like the bluey greeny tones. And so I think it's a good time to bring back in this tone. Sometimes I envision you at home yelling at me like you, <laughs> like you would at a sports game and you're just like, no, use the green, use the green next. No, you, you know what I mean? I'm, I guess I'm kind of worried about what's gonna happen on, on the outskirts of this piece because the warp strings get so wide that I'm like, am I gonna be just forced to only be able to use roving and is that maybe just okay? I think it's gonna have to just be okay. I think I'm happy with that there. So now I'm gonna do this green next cause I have this strand and I think I'm gonna just start doing some knotting over here. I'm always trying to think of ways to explain what I'm doing <laughs> when I do these like more organic things. And the truth is I'm, I'm kind of just trying not to overthink it. I'm trying to just put stuff on the loom and legitimately just look at it and say like, how, how do I feel about how this looks? Do I wanna back up? Do I wanna keep going? Like, what do I, how does it make me feel? And I know that can be really vague because it's just like, okay, but like how? But I think truly with these ones, you have to just be willing to play around with it and just like slap some stuff on the loom and, and then slap some more on there. And then if something like looks really bad to you, just take that out. It's just so interesting how you can try a craft and just think, you know, if it, did, if it doesn't go well the first time, you're kind of like, this is not for me. But now that I've had some time away from it and I'm coming back to it, I'm like, how did I not love this before? Because right now I'm really, really loving it. Here's my question. I'm like kind of wondering about, like could I get away with some really chunky merino to sort of be the border? Will it kind of ruin the vibe of it? I don't know. It would certainly make my life a lot easier though. Maybe that's the easiest way to do it. And I don't, like I'm not upset about how that looks. It's a little more white than I thought I would use, but maybe. Like it could be done with like this color too. Maybe that would look better. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit more though. Where was I gonna do white knotting? I don't remember. I think it's up here. So I think I'm close enough to the edges on all sides now that I'm gonna try to do a border. I'm kind of leaning toward this or maybe, no, I think we have, a, we have so much blue on the very edge and we have no pink on the edge. So I think this would be the right choice. Okay, here we go. Now, will it be easier? I think I'm gonna thread the roving into my needle and I'm just gonna start, maybe I'll actually start where it's a little bit closer to the edge and then go under over. In order to not try to felt this as much, I'm gonna go halfway around and then I'm gonna start at the other end and go the other way around. So then on the back, I'm gonna take this end and go this way and this one and go this way. And then it looks like pretty much seamless. Click this playlist right here to learn how to warp a hoop as well as all the different stitches I used in this piece.